Hi, I'm Stock Investor Davis. Welcome to the channel and please subscribe. Let's just take a look at AIR. It's They're closing in on their next quarterly earnings. So I just want to recap what we went over before about how we're valuing this one. So again, they last reported earnings on January 9th for their period end uh, November 30th, 2023. Their next reported earnings we're expecting that to be at around the end of the month, uh, March 28th, for its period ending February 29th. So we'll look at its current earnings per share and price to sales ratio, the guidance for its earnings per share, the guidance for price to sales, and then we'll do a comparison between what it's doing now, guidance for both those metrics, followed with a technical analysis. And uh, I want to look at the gain potential this one has. So just to start off, it's current trailing 12 months earnings per share. It's at 71 cents. And based on what we've seen in its recent past, so focusing mainly on the past two years, it's low in terms of price to earnings multiple is about 35. I've brought this down a little bit. It was 40, but I used a different method, which just brought it down a little bit. Uh, the average over this time span, that remained the same at 58. And then that high, I also pulled that down to 79. It was 80. I just pulled it down one. Uh, but when we look at those two multiple ranges, that gives us a fair value price for this company between 25 and 56. And right now it's trading at 14. So it's it looks like it's a great purchase, I have to say. Uh, let's look at the next metric. This is our price to sales. So right now it's trailing 12 months. Sales is about 81.5 million with current shares, shares outstanding of 29.8 million. This gives us a sales per share of $2.74. And we're, again, we've looked at past data. In this one, we're focusing mainly on the past three years. We've seen that it's price to sales uh, multiple ranges mainly between 5 and 15 with a average of 10. This hasn't changed at all. Uh, so we still have this price range of between 14 and 41. The price is at 14. So it's actually at the very bottom, even when we look at price to sales, which price to earnings, that multiple is our primary driver. So... Again, to see it in that green zone, uh, it's pretty rare to come across a company like this. So I'm probably going to be picking this one up, uh, at least to some degree. Let's now look forward at what guidance is projecting. So they gave us the full year. They didn't give us next quarter. I was able to kind of estimate uh, what a reasonable range for next quarter is, but it, it doesn't really impact uh, the year end. But we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit. So for its year end, they're projecting about 80 million uh, sales. We'll see how that actually transpires. We do have some news that could update this. Um, but before we get there, so it tells us they're projecting revenue of between 75 and 85 million. So we just split that down the middle, said 80. They also tell us that gap net income, they're estimating between 20 and 25% of their revenue will be net income. So again, just splitting that right down the middle at 22.5% gets us this net income of $18 million, keeping the shares outstanding the same. That gives us earnings per share of 60. And I want to update this real quick. This should say 35 and this should say 79. Uh, these figures though are correct. That gives us a new fair value range between 22 and 51 going into its year end. And so I think that's what's kind of the big fuss right now is uh, they they guided us lower. So before it was about 100 million that they were saying. And now all of a sudden they brought it down to 75 to 85, which is definitely a blow. But when you look at last year, they've made... Uh, something like a 30% revenue growth over this past year. So to be knocking them because they didn't get, uh, what would that be like? 
60% growth. I mean, they, they're still growing pretty well. They guided lower. And whenever we see that earnings per share, uh, that fair value range pull back, it, I, I, I think it's just overcorrecting here. And so that's why we're getting this nice buying opportunity. Let's look forward at the price to sales though. Uh, so this is guidance again, going into its year end. Everything in that blue shaded area, that's the same from the previous slide. Uh, we still have that $2.69 now in our sales to shares, which pulls this back a little bit, or actually this stays the same. The, this fair value hasn't changed. It's still 13 to 40. And then I, again, it's right at the bottom, right at the bottom of the price to sales, which again, we like to use that price to earnings because that's what kind of matters at the end of the day, what, what you're earning it, and like what you're bringing home. So to see though it's revenue, uh, this is like an, a more confirmation that this is a good one to pick up. Uh, again, let's now look at some news. So this was interesting. About a month ago, Air received a $23 million in new follow-on orders to meet customers' growing demand. So this, I imagine, is that customer that they were talking about. So if you're unfamiliar, the reason that they went from $100 million uh, in revenue for its physical year uh, 2024 was because a customer just their timeline got pushed back. And so what I'm imagining is this might be that customer who's like, okay, we're actually ready to pick it up a little bit early or better yet, it could be a brand new customer that they weren't expecting. Overall, I'm not sure how much that 23 million is gonna impact its year end because I have to imagine management knew some of that, some of those millions were gonna come in, but clearly not to the extent of 23 otherwise they wouldn't have published it so it'll be interesting to see what they say about this in its uh, next quarterly report which is coming up then they also announced a shipment of these new products it the the piece that i'm noticing though is that next generation silicon photonics integrated circuits so that's i believe they said that this is a small revenue area for right now but it could expand over time and i'm speaking about the silicon photonics we'll see how this plays out but it it's clearly nice to see that they are expanding into these different markets so let's now do a quick comparison before i go into the technical analysis just to see what the what the image actually looks like when we apply uh, these fair value ranges uh, but before that, so right here, this is our earnings per share, and it really should be uh, price to earnings. So I'm going to put price to earnings here. So for the current, what what it currently, the fair value range that I consider it to be for uh, November 30th, so when it last reported, through the next report, which is going to be the end of the month, I like that 25 to 56 dollar range. So seeing at 14, I really like that price. And then even going out to uh, its year end, we're seeing 22 to 51. So again, very similar type of situation where it appears undervalued uh, and a good time to pick this one up. Here, price to sales, similar setup, just we're using the price to sales fair value range. Again, on the, on the line of being fairly priced and being undervalued uh, with that range of 14 to 41 for right now. So it's right on the line. And then even going out to the end of the year, yes, we do see a pullback, but still right there, right there on the line of being, it, it is within fair value, but it's very close to being undervalued. So let's pivot to the technical analysis real quick just because maybe you like to see it in this fashion. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. Hopefully that's okay for us. So the boxes that I'm looking at most importantly is this set right here, this price to earnings set. Uh, we can see this green line connects those two boxes. 
And here's the price down here. And what I, I should mention that it's the top of the box. That is that fair value line is the top of the box. And then up here, we have our price to earnings, uh, the, the max. And so here we're looking at the bottom of the box. So if it were to exceed that, uh, that's when it's like, you probably want to take some profits here. But right here, it's well below that line. It's actually even going beyond the box that we drew in, which I just use a $10 zone, but it's really just the top of the box. So it's well, well below the top of the box. And uh, it's going to be that way even going into next quarter, next year. Uh, so what what could this potentially look like for us in terms of a gain? So when I look at airs, whoops. So when I look at air and I'm looking at right here, what excites me is the gain potential. So theoretically, based on my uh, estimates, what could happen is it could potentially just more than double in price. So what we have here, and maybe let me just start with that. If we take that 35 times multiple and the 79 times multiple between now and the next quarter's earnings, we should expect an 8% gain at minimum. We should. Up to 144%. It sounds crazy, but that just shows the potential here. It, it can grow very quick and it shouldn't be surprising. If we go into next quarter, this is where trouble could happen. You can see my estimate here is 11 cents. So this was based off uh, them basically projecting about $38 million over the next half. And them also saying that it's likely to be like a 40-60 split. So that gives us overall... 11 cents earnings per share at the end of the quarter, which based on that news, this possibly could go up a little bit and that would be great. All we want to do is see that um, whatever it's bottoming out at, we want to see that bottom and then hopefully a rise back up, which is kind of projected. Uh, we go to 11 cents to 17 and then out here is what the analysts are saying. This one seems a little high. Uh, We'll see, but nothing I've seen would warrant that type of figure at this time. But these two have me excited because, again, next quarter, potentially, at minimum, it should be a 60% return. Will it? We don't know. But, again, it should do that. We'll see. And then a max would be potentially 262%. It, it truly sounds unbelievable, but it, should, it shouldn't be a surprise if it happens. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, and because those figures are so high, uh, that's why I'm saying it's worth a flyer. And overall, if we want to look at something else, let me just pull this over here. So I just kind of threw together some uh, recent quarters in their last year's earnings. Just put them on Excel. Uh, just so I could kind of play around with the figures a little bit. And what we see down here, we have the gross margin percentages. This company's solid. For how small it is, I just like their numbers. So again, looking down here, we have their gross margin percentages, their operating margin percentage, and then their net margin percentage, so their net income. You know, gross margins around 50%, most recently over 50%. That... Anytime you get that figure, it let it gets me excited. Then the operating margin, okay, 25%. And then net income margin, they, they made some money off interest, especially in this past quarter. But to pull down between 20 and 25% from the top line all the way to the bottom, that's very good. Uh, so I, I do like this one. I think it's relatively safe for this type of risk. I don't. I can't imagine it pulling much lower. As if I look at this, um, it does seem like it found some support in terms of a technical analysis. It does seem like it found some support near this thirteen dollars. Could it go lower? Maybe, 
But what we're also seeing, what you could say is, we drew in this downtrend here that's been happening since about September. It's kind of trading sideways. So we might see that type of action where it just kind of maybe trades sideways for a little bit. Depending on this earnings call, I, I'm really kind of getting excited after seeing this 23 million add-on order, how that impacts this quarter and possibly a revision to its year-end guidance. That would be phenomenal. So what we could see is potentially a big pop. I mean, that that's potentially what could happen. And because of that, you know, that's why I think it's worth a flyer. And um, I guess I would say the smart thing to do if you decide like I'm going to do, you know, maybe uh, put a stop loss in there. So if we're able to pick this one up at, say, $15, maybe just put a stop loss in there at 14 and uh, see how it goes. Uh, but we'll see. You know, th that's just kind of what I'm thinking about potentially doing. Uh, not much more that we can do in terms of research. This is kind of it. Uh, but yeah, I would say because of those game potential figures, it's worth a flyer. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any, you know, uh, insights on your side of how you're viewing this, how you value it, uh, please share. I'd be happy to read that. Otherwise, uh, that's it. So remember to subscribe and I will see you on the next one.